To all North Post City Elves, those in Santa's Village, in the Lower 48, and all around the world, this is your weekly update. I am your host, Walter Mistletoe Livingstone. Let's go to press. For the week of April 25th, 2022, your sponsor will be Buzz's Bakery and Breads. Opened in North Post City the year the city was established, all elves in Santa's Village and North Pole City are familiar with Buzz's Bakery. If it's not fresh, warm, and soft, it's not Buzz's. Update from Santa's Village. A secret emergency meeting was called between Santa, the Easter Bunny, and the supervisors of the paint factory this past week. We reached out to the Department of Elf Affairs to find out what the importance of the meeting was and were told that it was a meeting that was related to Elfland security and information will be coming out in the future. They had no statement at this time and wanted to keep the information confidential. We do know that the meeting lasted almost six hours and it was held in a closed door session in Claus Mansion. Edward Hinglemeyer released updated guidelines on how you can bid on a position within Santa's Village. These guidelines outline that any elf can bid on an open position at any time they choose, which will allow them to have a change in their career. You can review these updated guidelines now posted on taolf.com. The developers at the division of WWWPR made some changes to the website this past week with the way links to blog posts are displayed on pages. The new look now has a larger image and shows only the title of the post. This was done to provide a cleaner look now that there are hundreds of posts on the site. Check out taolf.com for more information. Update for North Pole City weather. We will be experiencing unseasonably warm weather this week at North Pole City. Take advantage of this weather and get outside and enjoy yourself and your neighbors. For this week in elf history, I'm turning it over to our investigative reporter, Becky Marshmallow Livingstone. Take it away, Becky. Thanks, Walter. Well, this week in elf history, we're going to talk about the Empire State Building. It was on May 1st of 1931 that President Herbert Hoover of the United States officially dedicated New York City's Empire State Building, pressing a button from the White House that turned on the building's lights. Hoover's gesture, of course, was just simply symbolic because the president was in Washington, D.C., and somebody in New York actually flipped the switch. But the idea for the Empire State Building is said to have been born of a competition between Walter Chrysler of the Chrysler Corporation and John Jacob Raska of General Motors. They wanted to see who could erect the taller building. Chrysler had already begun work on the famous Chrysler Building, the gleaming 1,046-foot skyscraper in Midtown Manhattan. Not to be bested, Roscob assembled a group of well-known investors, including the former New York Governor Alfred E. Smith, and the group chose the architecture firm of Shreve, Lamb, and Harmon Associates to design the building. The Art Deco plans, said to have been based in large part on the look of a pencil, were also builder-friendly. The entire building was so easy to put up, it went up in just over a year. And under budget, at only $40 million, I know, elves, we don't really talk money, but $40 million? And well ahead of schedule. During certain periods of building, the frame grew an astonishing four and a half stories each week. At the time of its completion, the Empire State Building, at 102 stories and 1,250 feet high, 1,454 feet to the top of the lightning rod, was the world's tallest skyscraper. The Depression-era construction employed as many as 3,400 workers on any one single day, most of whom received an excellent pay rate, especially given the economic conditions of the time. The new building imbued New York City with a deep sense of pride, desperately needed at the depths of that Great Depression, when many city residents were unemployed and the prospects looked bleak. The grip of the depression on New York's economy was still evident a year later when only 25% of the Empire State's offices had been rented. 
1972, the Empire State Building lost its title as world's tallest building to New York's then World Trade Center, which itself was the tallest skyscraper for but just a single year. Well, back to you, Walter. Thank you, Becky. The North Pole City Commerce Association once again will be conducting a collection of old live Christmas trees this week that they will take out to the lake and sink so that they can be used for fish habitats. If you have changed out your live tree, please place the old one outside of your business or cabin and someone will be around to pick it up and take it out to the lake. Is that Polar Bear Lake that they're doing that for again? Yes, it is. Oh, I love it when they do that. It makes such great little fisheries. The North Pole City Sports League, in conjunction with the Easter Bunny, will be hosting a hopscotch competition on Friday morning at City Center for anyone wishing to come out and participate. You will be able to enter the contest individually or in teams of two and four. Prizes will be awarded for first, second, and third place for each category. Registration will open at 9 a.m. and the contest is expected to begin around 11 a.m. Come out and enjoy the fun. For those of you who need a quick review of the hopscotch play before the event, see this week's edition of the Peppermint Post, where they will be reviewing the rules of play. Santa's Village Greenhouse will be hosting their annual Spring Social and Dance this Friday night at the Greenhouse. You can come out and view the new plants and saplings and take part in the dance they will be hosting to celebrate the spring planting season. Doors open at 7 p.m. with the dance starting at 8. Refreshments will be available throughout the night. WELF MPC would like to wish a very happy birthday to Emily Sue Livingstone celebrating her 600th birthday. Sue has been with the syrup factory for over 300 years now and enjoys the sweetness of each day. We wish her many more sweet days in the future. This is Walter Mistletoe Livingstone with a reminder, friendship isn't a big thing, it's a million little things. Have a good evening and be sure to tune in next week for another WELF MPC North Pole Radio News Update.